What's going on guys? Welcome back to the launched stand-up coaster. Today we're going to be working on custom supports, but not all of the supports. Because as I mentioned in my last video, a lot of the default supports were actually good enough to just keep. While others may have been placed in weird sections or there might have... There may have been some sort of obstruction, so there weren't any supports. So therefore, we have to create some supports ourselves. And in this video, you're going to be seeing how I do that. Some of these supports are going to end up looking very weird. Uh, others may look very normal. Uh, they just aren't in the same place that the default supports would be, I guess. Uh, this first support right here, for example, it's very very wide it's stretching its legs <laughs> i guess uh, so yeah we're creating the supports for the first zero g roll here the very first inversion and as i mentioned in my last video the colors of the coaster and especially the supports are very faded they're not very strong colors and that's because this is supposed to be an older roller coaster so the colors are supposed to be faded somewhat not on the trains the trains do have stronger colors that's just something uh, i have noticed in on real life coasters uh, older roller coasters that even though the track fades the train does not it's probably better kept but yeah this is one of those kind of rides that needs a new paint job in real life so here we're working with fitting the supports into the inclined loop. This uh, wasn't the easiest task because I wanted to look normal, but I also didn't want uh, want it to be a dangerous head chopper. When I place supports uh, in front of some certain track, I uh, figure out if it can be there or not. By As you can see here, I stop the train and then I see not only if the seats can be in there, but I kind of measure from uh, just my vi own vision and guessing if uh, it's like if you're able to stretch your arms, keep your arms up or take them out to the side without hitting anything. That is the goal. You're, you should be able to stretch your arms all over the place without hitting the supports or the ground or whatever. So, with B&M, it's not the hardest in creating supports. B&M is one of the easier uh, manufacturers to create custom supports for. And they have two forms of connectors. Uh, the reason they're so easy is because the spine is huge. So you can really, like, it's not the kind of triangular track that makes it more difficult. Uh, speaking of difficult, this support right here was really annoying to make. Uh, I don't even remember how it ended up, but let's take a look here, I guess. I guess, I mean, you wouldn't see a BNM in real life with a support looking like this, but, you know, what what, what works, it works, I guess. So that's what I went with. So, how, uh, I kind of wanted to talk about some of the coasters I've experienced. I've experienced five BNMs in real life, and unfortunately, only one of them was not a wing coaster or a dive coaster. And that is the Monon, uh, a flawless coaster in Tivoli Gardens, which I recently did a review on. I'll, I'd very much appreciate if you went to check that out. Uh, so, I don't have an experience with how stand-up coasters uh, feel. I've never tried a stand-up coaster. The closest I've been to standing up on a roller coaster has been uh, Huchibane in Tivoli Gardens. But that's because that's such an old ride and... It has very not I mean very loose restraints. It's bus bars, but they don't go far down at all. And if you sit in the back, you get really good airtime on that. And you stand up. You get to stand up there. So <laughs> that's the closest I've been to that, I guess. Uh, but I really do want to try a BM stand-up coaster. Some say they're terrible, some say they are alright. I mean that depends on the stand-up coaster. A lot of people like the Riddler's Revenge in Green Lantern and a lot of people hate Vortex for example um, so I would love to try oh yeah you're, you're seeing uh, I, I was okay what you just saw there was I looked at two other B&M's I've created that uh, aren't on the channel and uh, where are where I created custom supports for the vertical loops and I was just making sure that I was doing it the right way 
I was looking at how I did it there. But yeah, uh, I haven't tried a stand-up coaster, and I'd love to try one. It is on my bucket list to try a B&M stand-up coaster someday. And I really want to know how it is, even though I may not like it. And when it comes to this roller coaster, this coaster would not be very comfortable in real life. This coaster would probably be one of those that is very hated because of the transitions and such. So I imagine that the coaster I've created here is a bad coaster. Uh, but you know what, what the hell, uh, I'm pretty proud of this coaster anyways, even though it it's not supposed to be uh, a coaster where you think, oh my god, that was that was so good. No, no, no this is a coaster that is built uh, as a creation and that could exist in real life, I suppose. So what is the theme of this ride? Well, when I make roller coasters, I often don't think of a fee uh, of a theme or a name until the very end. So this ride has green and purple and cyan or turquoise, whatever you want to call it, colors. And so the my first uh, thought was that I wanted to make it some sort of, uh, I guess, sea theme, like ocean theme. So my first thought. My first uh, thought was to look up some sort of mythical creatures, and I found this thing called a hippocam. I I don't I didn't know about this in advance, but it's kind of like I, I mean, imagine a seahorse, but it's an actual seahorse. It's a uh, it's a horse that swims underwater. I'm gonna put a picture of it here. That that is a hippocam. So you know what? The colors matched. Uh, kind of like what I wanted to go for so that is the uh, the um, thing that I'm gonna name this roller coaster after uh, which you're gonna see in the POV so yeah uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier I just uploaded my review of Demonan I want to start doing a lot of reviews I'm not gonna do every single coaster I've ever ridden mostly because uh, yeah that would take a long time but that's not the problem because video ideas are always great right but I don't remember the experiences of all the coasters I have ridden well enough for example my number two coaster is Colossus at Hyde Park but I wouldn't be able to do a review because I don't remember it well enough what I remember of it uh, wouldn't actually quite fit for the number two spot but because uh, I, I mean well, I guess I do, uh, it does. It, I have some great memories, but I don't remember the entire layout. I uh, I remember it enough to put it at my number two spot, but I don't remember the last uh, part after the the uh, mid-course break run. I only remember a little bit of the big airtime hills. What I remember most is the first drop, and that is an amazing drop. I had a blast on it too, because my dad is afraid of heights, and it's a very tall coaster. It's 50 meters or 60 meters um, that's a that's a that's a bit unsure because Wikipedia says 60 meters which yes you shouldn't always trust Wikipedia but it says it very confidently and other places is other places including RCTB it says 50 meters so me and my friend Villas Byrne we had a bit of a discussion what we thought and he thinks it's 60 meters and I think oh well he thought I don't know if he still does but he did think that it was 60 meters and I thought it was 50 meters and so we don't really know because the Heidi Park website itself doesn't actually say how tall it is and that's because it's still closed it's gonna reopen this year so we're probably gonna find out how tall it is then but right now uh, it's kind of unsure so yeah I believe it's 50 meters I believe there's only one roller coaster I've tried over 60 meters which is Dashwood is Canon, my favorite roller coaster. God damn, this coaster is good. Speaking of that, I just deleted my Dashwood is Canon and Fluke von Novgorod review because I did not like it, as I said in my last video. So I'm going to be doing a review of both of those at some point. Um, Dashwood is Canon is probably going to be my next review, so be on the lookout for that. Let's, uh, let's get back to talking about the supports here. So, again... Uh, I based a lot of these supports on basically every kind of B&M I could find, I suppose. I based a lot of them on Demonan, because that's the B&M I know best. So I, I kind of already know in my head what all the supports for Demonan look like. 
because I know the coaster so well, so I can kind of I can think of a specific area of the demon of demonon and just think, oh well, uh, the supports look like that in that area. So, but if I'm in doubt, I obviously Google. And again, as I mentioned, some of these supports are not like BNM would really make them. And when I made supports for uh, this part of the coaster that goes th uh, through the vertical loop. That was very troublesome in the beginning. I had to move the support a little, and to me, that was a little unrealistic uh, in the way that it was placed. And there was a too big gap with no supports. But what, what the hell? I mean, I couldn't do it any better than that. So I'm, I'm it's satisfied. Uh, it's satisfying enough. So uh, let's talk about the layout. Let's talk about the layout. So. As I said in my last video, the ride is based on the Incredible Hulk at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. Uh, that is the world's first B&M launch coaster, and it has this tire launch like this does, and then it has a CRG roll like this does, so that's very heavily based. After that, uh, yeah, it has the inclined loop, which isn't based off anything, it's just something I thought was, was nice. It has a vertical loop then where the track goes through the vertical loop. That is inspired by Apocalypse, the world's first B&M. And then it has a dive loop and uh, again the part that goes through the loop. Uh, the mid-course brake run which is very fast, which very, very nice. I don't like slowing my coasters down on my mid-course brake runs. Uh, so. <laughs> I, I like them to go at full speed uh, because a lot of coasters do that in real life too. If you watch my hyper coaster video, I really goofed up on that one because the coaster slows down on the mid course brake run and it is so slow afterwards. And it, I, I'm not a fan of my hyper coaster. I very much prefer my mega coaster that I made, my BNM mega coaster. Uh, but yeah, a about that, by the way. Uh, a lot of people say, hmm, what is a hypercoaster, what is not a hypercoaster? To me, a hypercoaster is just whatever's above 200 feet and below 300 feet. So, uh, like, so uh, some of the B&M hypers aren't actually that. Like, Fury 325 and Leviathan are both above 300 feet. They're giga coasters, and people refer to them as giga coasters. But something that doesn't make sense to me is Goliath at Laron. That is below 200 feet, but above 100 feet, which would make it a mega coaster, but people still refer to it as a hyper coaster. And that confuses me because it's not a hyper coaster, it's a, a mega coaster. So why do people say hyper coaster about that, but giga coaster about Leviathan and Fury 325? That's one of those things that don't really make sense to me. These supports right here also make no sense at all. But you know what, uh, well, this second one does, but the first one there is very weird. But you know what, it, it works out. I mean, whatever works, works, right? This is this is a very head choppy area, by the way. The, where the trainer is right now, you feel like you're gonna smash into the supports, but you never do. You can even stretch your arms. So that's pretty cool. That's an effect I love to give, really good head choppers. The ride I've done with the best New Miss Elements is Raptor at Gardaland, which is my number four roller coaster. It's a BM wing coaster. And it just has some it oh yeah, well it's my favorite BM too, but it just has some awesome near miss elements. Because I mean and, and it's packed with them, both uh with the feet and your head and the side, whatever you name it. It's packed with near miss elements. The world's first BM wing coaster has been made very well especially the last inversion anyway uh, that is to end of today's video I hope you enjoyed keep on writing all of that stuff uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see the POV and otherwise I hope you keep on writing